Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this is the Samsung Space Monitor. And it's easily one of the most unique monitors that I've ever used, although I'm not entirely sure who it's meant for. So the headline feature is of course that stand. You just simply clamp it onto the edge of your desk. And what this means is you can push it right back against your wall, which frees up loads of space on your desk for working, for activities, or maybe even robot stormtroopers. But then you can also bring it forward and tilt the screen and use it in any position you like. That is a really cool bit of engineering for a monitor. And it means that if I actually put my keyboard out of the way, it'll go completely flush flat on my desk. It kind of reminds me of those more sort of art studio monitors, a bit like the Microsoft Surface Studio. But then again, this isn't professionally color accurate, nor is it a touch display. So I'm not entirely sure how often or why you'd want it in this position. But for me, put it in a bit of a halfway house like this. I've got room here from a fake plants or whatever you want to put in there. And then if I want to bring in my laptop or do some other work on the desk, I can push it right back to the wall like that, free up loads of room. And yeah, it really is a space saving monitor, just as it says on the tin. Setting up the space monitor is pretty easy. In the box, you get the power brick, an HDMI Y cable, I'll explain more about this in a second, and a plastic port cover for the back of the monitor. The stand feels very solid and well made. You just slot it into the back, rest it down, and then secure it with the four screws provided. Then you just need to clamp it to a desk. It'll only work with straight edges, and you may need to unscrew and lower the bottom chin of the clamp if you have a thicker desk, up to 3.54 inches or 90 millimeters. Also, it won't work if you have a, what do you even call it, a lip? You obviously need to be able to push the clamp all the way into the desk, so it may not work with everything. So once you've set it up how you like it, I definitely recommend using the bundled HDMI cable. It's got a splitter on it, so you can plug the power and the HDMI into the back of the monitor, and then feed the single cable down the back of the stand, which has a groove so you can press it in to keep it hidden. And then you've got the splitter, which separates the power from the HDMI. I do have a couple of problems though. Firstly, the port selection is pretty limited. You get one HDMI 2.0 and one mini DisplayPort 1.2. That's it. And for a 2019 monitor, the lack of Thunderbolt 3 is frustrating. I mean, I love the idea of pushing the screen back to the wall and then using my laptop on the desk and using the space monitor as a second screen. And for me, USB-C would be ideal for this. There's also no USB ports for plugging in peripherals, no headphone jack, and it doesn't have any built-in speakers. Although I do like having a joystick rather than buttons for navigating the on-screen display. Also, while I do love the hinge mechanism, it's smooth, there isn't much screen wobble, and you can use it in any position you like, there's no actual height adjustment unless you bring it forward towards you. And also, you can't pivot or rotate the screen, and I know some people would love to use this in portrait mode for coding or stock trading, plus you can't visa mount it, so you're kind of stuck with Samsung's stand. So it's a very cool design with some fairly big compromises. The good news though is the display itself is pretty good. It uses a VA panel, but once calibrated, it covers 100% of the sRGB and 85% of the Adobe RGB color gamuts. Although out of the box, the colors were a bit muted, so I would definitely recommend calibrating if you can. So this is where I'm a bit confused about who this is actually meant for. I could see it in an office or a studio. I mean, it looks quite office-y. And a big selling point is you get loads of desk space back. Plus it supports picture-in-picture, -picture, so you can display two sources side by side. But the $400 price tag is a bit much for general office use. So then maybe creatives, designers, artists. But then it's not professionally color accurate. Its peak brightness is only 250 nits, plus the lack of Thunderbolt 3 is frustrating. And then we have the 144Hz refresh rate, which is great for gamers, but then it seems odd not to have any free sync or G-Sync option. So while I'm not entirely sure who should actually buy this, what I do know is I really like it. Although for me as a YouTube creator and a video editor, I think I would go for the 32-inch 4K version and use it more as a productivity monitor. Although that is $100 more and you do miss out on the high refresh of the 27-inch version. But either way, it's great to see something a bit different, and it really is nice having so much extra space on my desk. So while it isn't for everyone, and there are a fair few compromises, I would recommend it, and this isn't something I say very often on my channel, but I think they're pretty reasonably priced as well, given the specs and their unique design. I've put links in the description below if you want to check them out, and I'd love to hear what you make of the space monitor in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.